The public school is one of the great British institutions. This is one of the best known, rugby school in Warwickshire, in the heart of the English Midlands. Rugby school was founded in 1567 and aims to provide its pupils with the highest standard of education. We call them independent schools now because they're not public at all, they're actually private. But it's a fee-paying school and one uh, which provides a whole range of uh, facilities for boys and girls. What age do the pupils start here? Here it's at 11, but only two small classes for day pupils at 11 and 12. The main entry is at 13. And where do they come from? From all over Britain and certainly quite a few from abroad. About 11% come from overseas. Nowadays, parents have changed their views about boarding school. They actually like to come and visit their children and to watch them playing games and to hear them playing music and so on. So quite a lot of the parents live with about, uh, within about an hour and a half of the school in the Midlands area of England. But still, quite a few come from Scotland, thank goodness, and from the north of England, from the West Country, and so on. So it is still a national school and not just a local one. And what is special about rugby school? One of the interesting things, there are quite a lot of special things, I think, is the mixture, the juxtaposition of what is old and what is new. If you walk around rugby school and look at the buildings, you do get the sense of families having been here. It's an old school. It's been on the go for hundreds of years. So there is a feeling of tradition. But at the same time, it's a very innovative school and tries to do lots of new things. The facilities are exceptional, and the tradition gives the whole school a sense of community and a real atmosphere. I like uh, the way that you live with people in your year for five years and you get to be really good friends with them and then after you've finished here, maybe go to university with them. So how many days a week do you have school? Uh, six days. We have a full day on Monday, we have half day on Tuesday, full day Wednesday, half day Thursday, full day Friday, and then half a day on Saturday. And then Sunday's free time. We have chapel in the morning, but that's about it. The days are very long and you have lessons six days a week, which is hard work, but in general, I, I really enjoy it. My dormitory is through here. Uh, we have eight people sleeping here. We have, this is my bed here, and my wardrobe. There. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some drawers here to keep my clothes in, things like that. Shoes can go in here. Mm -hmm. um, and about ten, we've got to be up here by about 9.45, and at 10, the, a senior boy comes up and turns off the lights. He sleeps over there. He comes up at about 11 o'clock. Uh, in fact, he, he just joins in with the fun. You know, there's this really great atmosphere in the dorm. This is the language lab where we can, um, we can record some of our own conversations, watch videos in different language. We can, um, we can use the computers to type in other languages, um, write essays, uh, watch, watch TV from, from different countries. You can learn a whole variety of languages, Russian, German, Latin, Basically, any language that you, you, that you'd like to learn, you can learn it here. The school gave its name to this, rugby football. The game was invented here. During a game of football in 1823, a pupil called William Webb Ellis ran with the ball instead of kicking it. Such initiative is encouraged in pupils today. William Webb Ellis in 1823 took the ball in his arms and in those days you weren't allowed to do that. I suspect his friends didn't like him very much for that and thought that he'd spoilt things and it took really quite a large number of years before that was incorporated into the game. But I also think it says quite a lot about the, the rugby boy and now the rugby girl, that uh, you need a little bit of rebellion in you, and every so often it's good to have someone who actually does things differently. For over 400 years, rugby was a school only for boys. In 1976, rugby opened its doors to girls, but only in the sixth form. 1993 saw a big change, with girls joining throughout the school. Now, 210 of the school's 710 pupils are girls. Although there are fewer girls than boys, there aren't any major difficulties. I think the one problem is sport. Um, 
because rugby was invented here, the, the boys are very proud of their sports and girls' sport tends to be pushed into the background. But apart from that, we're treated equally. What do you think are the benefits of being at rugby? Well, um, I th there are very good facilities here. Every um, aspect of the academic life is catered for. There's, um, there's a new library's just been opened. We've got sp a sports centre, gym, drama studio, music facilities. So there's never any time to be bored. There's always something you can go off and do. Um, and also, in a boarding school, the friendships you make are, are very close as well, so I, I think um, that's enjoyable too. So you have a special role in the school. Can you explain what that is? Well, I'm head of Dean House, which is one of the girls' houses, and that means that um, on an administration level I have to help with the running of the house. Um, I have to work with my housemaster and mistress to give um, certain people certain jobs they have to do in the house. Um, but I also have to get to know the girls quite well so I can help them with small problems they might have and tell the housemaster and mistress how everyone is getting on in the school. I usually get up about half past seven. We have breakfast at eight. And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays we have to go to chapel at half past eight. So I have to gather everyone up and usher them into the chapel where we have a short service before the lessons. Do you feel that you get enough free time? Um, yes, I, I think that a good thing about being at the school is you can decide how much you do. Um, they do have the facilities but you don't have to use them. So you can, you can decide what you do and how much free time you have. I think if we were given more free time we'd find out that we were pretty bored if, if we were given too much. So I think we do have enough free time, yes. Does the school only aim for academic excellence? Not at all. That's at the centre of what one does. And I think, remember, the teaching staff, the most important thing is to get the teaching right, and everything else stems from that. But being a boarding school, we're trying to do a huge number of other things. And ironically, the universities now tend to look more at the academic side of things. But the next stage, employment, thank goodness, goes back to the other qualities of all-round excellence of being able to do several things, of being able to see things through and plan things through to the end, leadership, teamwork, all that kind of thing. Uh, these are very important qualities, and employers, thank goodness, start to look at that. Universities are not so interested, but we care a lot about all the other things that happen outside the classroom. <laughs> range of activities outside of the classroom from rock bands and scuba diving to making television programs in the school's media center many old rugbyans as the school's former pupils are known have gone on to fame and fortune Lewis Carroll the author of Alice in Wonderland was at rugby other famous pupils include the poet Rupert Brooke and Neville Chamberlain who was the British Prime Minister at the beginning of the Second World War so what do you hope to do after you leave rugby? After I leave rugby? Um, well, I think I've decided on the media. I, mean, I know what I'm going to do for A-levels. I think I'll do English, French and Spanish, and maybe study English at university. What do you hope to do when you leave rugby? Well, I, I hope to go to university. I've been offered a, a place at university to study archaeology and anthropology. So I have to, I have to get certain grades. And if I, if I get three A's, I'll be able to go to Cambridge next year to study that. Well, good luck. Thank you. What do you hope that each pupil will take with them from rugby? Something different. I'd hate them all to be the same. And I would hope that each one is able to develop his or her particular interest or excellence. I'd want them, first of all, to be able to work hard. Uh, the habit here is academic work. When they go on to be bankers, vets, farmers, whatever it might be, they must work hard at that particular discipline. I would like them to have a sense of fun and I believe that school ought to be fun. If they're here for five years and haven't enjoyed those five years, there's something wrong. And I would like them also to have just a tiny sense, I say tiny because obviously one wouldn't survive if it was too great, a tiny sense of rebellion. 
I don't think they ought to take things for granted, and they ought to be able to say, well, why are we doing things this way? Isn't there a better way of doing it? And can't we make the world a better place somehow? Uh,